sound and logical. Subscribe. So the King James Bible, also known as the Authorised Version, was translated by a team of scholars and translators appointed by King James I of England. One of the most prominent bishops and scholars who was a key figure in the translation was Lancelot Andrews. He was a man of the cloth, an ecclesiastical authority, who wrote a pious exposition of the Ten Commandments, with the strap line, fear God and keep his commandments because this is the whole requirement of man. Now the book Ecclesiastes is commonly attributed to King Solomon. Now back in the feudal system, kings, queens were considered gods and goddesses. Interesting. Subscribe. The translation work began in 1604 and was completed in 1611. The team was divided into six committees, each responsible for translating a portion of the Bible. They used earlier English translations, as well as the original Hebrew and Greek texts as their sources. It's interesting that the Septuagint had the same kind of historical translation story with six taken from each tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel given 72 translators but this one just talks about how the team was divided into six committees interesting the translation process involved a substantial number of scholars but the most notable individuals involved included Lancelot Andrews a prominent bishop and scholar who was a key figure in the translation process Richard Bancroft, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who oversaw the project. William Tyndall, although he was not directly involved in the King James translation, his earlier English translation work heavily influenced the King James Bible. The King James Version has had a significant impact on English speaking, Christianity and literature and its influence is still felt today. Other notable scholars was John Overall, a bishop and scholar who worked on the translation. Thomas Bilson, a bishop and theologian who was involved in the translation process. Edward Lively, a scholar with expertise in Hebrew and Greek who contributed to the translation. The project was extensive, involving around 50 to 60 scholars in total. These translators worked in various committees of six, each responsible for different parts of the Bible. Their work was reviewed and revised multiple times to ensure accuracy and consistency. The meticulous process helped shape the enduring and influential King James Version of the Bible. The first Westminster company was responsible for translating Genesis to 2 Kings under William Bedwell, a scholar with expertise in Arabic and Hebrew. He was a part of this committee.
The second Westminster company was responsible for translating First Chronicles to the Song of Solomon. John Boyce, an important figure in the committee, known for his work on the Old Testament. The first Oxford company, responsible for translating Isaiah to Malachi. Richard Kilby, a scholar involved in the Old Testament translation. The second Oxford company responsible for translating the New Testament, Thomas Ravis, a key member of the committee who worked on the New Testament. The first Cambridge company responsible for translating the Apocrypha, Andrew Downs, a scholar who contributed to the translation of the Apocrypha. The second Cambridge company responsible for revising and finalising the translations of various sections. The translation was a collaborative effort involving many scholars, reflecting a broad spectrum of expertise. Thank you for joining us on our journey through the history of King James Bible. We've explored its profound impact and enduring legacy. The King James Bible, first published in 1611, was brought to life by a dedicated team of scholars appointed by King James I, who in royal, godly fashion, followed the influence of his predecessors, Elizabeth I and King Henry VIII. Please let us know what King James translator you are aware of the most, and which King James translator you didn't know or were least aware of in the comment section below. Big up, bless up, one. Subscribe. Subscribe. has said that the Bible was the very word of God. And he said, thy word is truth. And he said, not a jot or tittle will be removed until all is fulfilled. He didn't believe in verbal inspiration. He believed in jot and tittle inspiration. The Bible cannot have an ears. Not does not, but cannot have an ears. Tonight I have an opportunity to address an issue that I think is of utmost importance. I believe that Tonight, we're going to deal with answering the most important question for any Christian to answer. Why do you choose to believe the Bible? And the answer to that question, for me, resides in the Bible itself. Now, why would I appeal to the Bible in this way? Because there is no higher authority than the Bible. If there is no high, see, if I were to appeal to another authority, I would be conceding the fact that there's a higher authority than the Bible. I'll give it to you step by step because every point here is important. Um, first, it's a reliable collection of historical documents. Can you say that with me? It's a reliable collection of historical documents. Say it again. It's a reliable collection of historical documents. One more time. It's a reliable collection of historical documents. This is important. Um, it's important that it's reliable, it's important that it's a collection, it's important that it's historical. All of these things are important. 
that we have a collection of historical documents. Now, the Bible is unlike um, many other holy books in that the Bible is actually a collection um, that all of this came together in order to give us the Bible, okay? And this actually adds to the credibility of the Bible, the fact that it is a reliable collection of historical documents. And Mark, his, his favorite, you know, one of his favorite words is, you know, straight away and straight away and immediately, okay? And he's just boom, 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 you know? And it is brief, he, just the facts, ma'am. That's Mark's goal. Superhuman events, that's like sports highlights, okay? These are supernatural events. They're talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. They're talking about when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. Bible cannot have any ears. Not does not, but cannot have any ears. Do not broadly suggest Christian books by people who do not believe the Bible's inerrant. It will confuse too many sheep. Christian books by people who do not believe the Bible's inerrant. It will confuse too many sheep. Emotional, damn it! Sound and logical.